Hello, this is Ben with Solveering LLC. In this tutorial I'm going to go over some of the FE tools within the InStep application. The FE mesh in this case comes from a fluid simulation that was done on a simple tube. This file is relatively small in size so keep that in mind. It just shows an indentation at this constriction here. I'm going to start off by exporting the mesh file to an Enzyte format. Since this is anti-CFX, I'm going to go ahead and open up the CFX Solver Manager and I'm going to export the file to another format. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to browse to my file location, which is just on my desktop here. It doesn't really matter which file I select, this is really just for a tutorial. But I'm going to go make sure I export to an Enzyte format and, I, and it needs to be in the gold binary format. Some of the other formats will be slightly different and it may encounter some issues as it goes ahead. I'm going to select where I'm going to export this to, which is again just on my desktop into this folder here. Once the files are exported, I can go ahead and I can close this dialog box. And we can take a look at the files I've just generated. Now, some of the other files here are really just uh, the scale of variables for this simulation. The only file I'm really interested in is the geom file. And you can see that that's relatively large compared to the other ones. But again, overall this is a relatively simple and small case. I'm now going to go ahead and I'm going to start up the InStep application. And you'll notice that I have the uh, optional FE tools in this since I'm using this with the FE license. I'm going to go and import this just like I would any other file by selecting the, for, uh, the filter from the drop down box. And this is a geom file. And I'm going to select the file and go ahead and open it. Note when you go. When you use the FE tools and you load in a file, you'll not actually get a display originally. The, the reason for that is that displaying some of this data, especially with larger files, can be very intensive. So in order to avoid extra CPU cycles, that was turned off by default. You'll also see brief information on what's actually in the file. And you'll see again that this is relatively small with only 134,000 uh, elements. Um, it does contain some surface elements, which is part of the Enzyme formash, and those aren't really required, so I can go ahead and delete them, but that doesn't really make much of a difference. I can now go ahead and I can extract the CAD surfaces from the volume mesh, which, depending on your file, can take some time. Once that part is done, you'll see that the body loads in the viewer, and you can manipulate that just like you would any other geometry file. One little hint here is that if you click with the middle mouse button anywhere on the geometry, it will set the rotate point in that location. So if I click at the end here with the middle mouse button, it will rotate around that point. And I can do that several times and always keep changing. This may make it easier for you to view different shapes depending on what you're looking for. Once the file has been successfully loaded, I can go ahead and straight export that to a step file. And I'm just going to leave the file name it gives me here. Again, making sure that I've selected step file as the file format. Since if I pick a different format, it will write to that. Once the body has been written, I can go ahead and I can close the application down. And I'm going to switch over to my CAD application which in this case here is Unigraphics NX, or what was known as Unigraphics NX 7.5, which is now called Siemens NX. And I'm going to go ahead and do an import of a step 214 file. I'm going to browse to the file, and I'm going to select it. The options here don't really matter for this case. I usually leave them all on just to simplify some of the surfaces. The file will go through and it will load just like you would load any other step file. Note that with some of these smaller mesh files you'll see some issues regarding to the edge accuracy. 
and it'll tell you so as it goes along. And these are all the issues that, that I found. These are all just limited to face-to-face -to -face inconsistency, meaning there's some uh, slight discrepancy with the edges. Now, I didn't select it to be imported directly my, into my existing model, so I can go ahead and open up the file that I've just generated. And here's the file that was just generated. And you can see this exactly the same as we had previously. Now, just to show you that this is actually a solid, I'm just going to pick the uh, Unite button. And this only works on solid bodies. So this proves that this is actually truly a solid body. Now, the same process as you've just seen should work for pretty much any file that comes out of a CAD appli uh, sorry, uh, FE application, provided that the file format is supported. Currently, we support NASTRAN, uh, PATRAN, as well as NSITE formats. If you are using any of those formats and you see strange behavior, please do send us an email to support at solverian.com or post us a note in our forum. Oftentimes, the f file formatting is slightly different from one application to another, and it can be that we just need to update a few parameters in order to load other files correctly.